On our way to Caldrum Long Barrow, you'll drive along Pilgrim Way, which is this route right here. And this road was established 3,000 years ago and then later used by the Romans for the first 500 years at their, after the birth of Christ when they occupied Kent. And then in the 1100s, it was used as a pilgrimage to Canterbury. So they call it Pilgrim's Way. And in 1538, it was dissolved because King Henry VIII established his dissolution of the monasteries in 1534. And by 1538, this path was no longer used for the route to Canterbury for religious purposes or, or pilgrimage, but of course it was still used for trade. And if you head down here, depending which direction you come, you'll go left or you'll go right to head down to the Coldrum Longborough, which is down this path. Right hey, here. we're on the path to Coldrum Longborough. That was built 4,000 years ago by the people who were living here at the time. And I'll give you more of the tour as we move on. But here's the path, and I think it's a couple miles, but I'll let you know when we get there. The trail here, it's pretty well marked. Coldrum Long Barrow, and it's not a hard path to walk. And over here, we have one of the largest arugula farms in all of England. Look at that. And it goes on for kilometers and kilometers. If you are visiting Kent, you really should make time to visit one of her ancient megaliths in Kent, along the river Medway as it cuts through North Downs. Here you can visit Coldrum Stones, Kit's Cody House, Whitehorse Stone, Coffin Stone, and many others. This is the only megalithic group in Eastern England and some of the most impressive and grandiose. Along the trail, we're gonna find farmlands, rolling, rolling farmlands. Here's my brother and my sister-in-law. They're walking up the trail. And today we're going to visit the Coldrum Long Barrow. And this, uh, this barrow was built a long time ago, 6,000 years ago, and is the most uh, preserved long barrow in all of England and perhaps all of Europe. So if you're out here, you really should take time to visit because you'll never forget the beautiful history and the stone layout of Coldrum Long Barrow. So the site's not very far, not very hard to find. And up here on your right is the entrance to Coldrum Long Barrow. And here's the entrance monument that will tell you all about what you're going to see. It's an older sign, so some of the facts might be a little incorrect. For example, it says 22 people of both sexes, but we know, we know now it's only about 17. And uh, established in 3000 BC, but now we know it's about 4000 BC. So we're going to visit the Coldrum Long Barrow. Here we go. Up the steps to Coldrum Long Barrow. Today we're visiting the Coldrum Long Barrow, also known as the Coldrum Stones. This is a chambered long barrow. barrow. Now this structure was built about 6,000 years ago in 4000 BC and it served as a burial chamber for the people who were living here. So about 5000 years ago the Britons abandoned their hunter-gatherer ways of living and in early Neolithic they started agricultural and farming and started more of a community living where generations would live in the same location for quite a long time. And so this is um, this long barrel here is built out of earth it's surrounded by 50 what's called local Sarsen Kentish stones that form the megalith. And it consisted of a rectangular earthen tumulus, which is a mound of dirt, enclosed by curb stones. And these are the curb stones. So let me describe what we have here. So here's what the structure used to look like. It's a, here's the entry point right here. And this is 64 feet long. And this is 50 feet. And this is about 40 feet. And you would enter the structure this way. It was covered with a mound of dirt and probably some timber between to help, to help keep, it, keep it higher. And as a burial site, we'll find out for about 17 different people. And we don't know if it's the local for uh, all the community or if it's a more of a royalty burial site. But today we know there are 17 people and in this time they're all buried in community graves, not in single graves like we find today. 
This is a, this used to be a higher level, actually level, it's eroded since, uh, since time. And this is the entry chamber, the entry to the ch burial chamber. So the cold drum long barrel consisted of sarsen stones, and this is a sarsen stone chamber covered by an earthen mound and bounded by slabs of Kentish rock. It's divided into three features. There's the chamber, there's the barrow, and the surrounding sarsen stones. So it was built with 50 sarsen stones, has a rectangular plan about 64 feet long this way, and about 50 feet wide in front, and it tapers down like a tapering rectangle to about 40 feet. Now all these, um, all these uh, tumulus uh, barrel structures around this area, they all faced to the east, and east is this way, and, and so you would enter the chamber from the front here. So the inner chamber, if you were to go in, it measures uh, 13 feet by five foot six, inch, six inches, with a height of six foot six inches. Now the northern side of the chamber, which is on that side, over here, is made up of two slabs, and the south side made up of a single slab, which is on this side. And there's probably a facade on the front here, but we'll never know since the fa facade was probably made of wood or some other rotting material. So, so these stones, they used to be on top, but about the year 1200 or 1300, the Catholics came over, and since it's a pagan monument, they ripped down all the stones. So they tumbled down here, and you can't replace them now because the mound's all deteriorated. And there's two stones of special interest. One is um, over here, and one is over there. And this one here is on the south side. And this stone, it shows evidence of abrasion and polishing where the where the um, community would polish their tools and perhaps their, if they had dishes or other artifacts, they'd polish them right here. And that shows that they were, uh, they were smart people, they had tools, and they knew how to, um, how to make them and prop, you know, how to use them, obviously. But it shows a, an evolution of civilization uh, evidence out here at the Cold Drum Long Barrow in Medway River. We're on the west side of the Longboro and we're facing east. And you notice a fantastic view and it's common practice for the the people of the time to build their Longboros on high points of interest where there's beautiful views out of respect for the for the dead in these graves. So we're facing east and all these Longboros they faced uh, they faced east, so if you find uh, Kitts Cody, it faces east as well as this one. Now the side here, this is the back of the chamber, and it was 50 feet, or 40 feet wide, and the front of the chamber was 50 feet wide, and the sides of the chamber were about 64 feet wide. So the stones here on the south side, they're very, uh, very rough, and they're not very well polished, and the stones on the north side, over here, they're better polished in shape, so it tells us that although the, the, the megalith took a while to build, they did have tools and they did have ways to mold the stones and shape the stones. So advanced civilization back 6,000 years ago from 4,000 BC onward. And here's the west side of the entrance that we're looking at with that beautiful view. So the path leads us around the south side of the barrow. And we can see the rocks. And once again, this um, burial site actually stood with open capacity of six foot six inches from front to back, which was about 64 feet. So you tell that through time, all the dirt has eroded uh, from this tumulus, and a tumulus is simply the name for a, a round mound structure. And if you take a look down here, this is our uh, carving stone. You tell by the abrasion uh, polishing was done here for tools or artifacts of the local culture who would work on their tools. There's a path that leads us down 
You're headed down the steps to observe the entrance to the Cold Run Barrow. This leads us down to the Cold Run Stone Circle. It's not a stone circle. It's a, a misnamed uh, item, but they used to think it was a stone circle, like you find in Stonehenge, uh, which is a very different structure than these tumulus burial sites. And here's a picture of what it have looked and like. And to date, we know of 17 bodies that were recovered and found here. There might be more, but it looks like uh, there's really no excavation. It's just pretty much held as is. We're looking at right here at the rag tree. And the rag tree is also named a wishing tree. And it's an old pagan ritual where you would hang your rags or some other memorial object on these trees to remember and pay respect to your loved ones who have passed away. So people still do it today on this rag tree and there's a pretty little bear. Now every May 1st, there's a festival here where you can come and you can dress up like a pagan and dance on the rag tree day dance as a pagan ritual if you wanted to. It's not my thing, but it's here on May 1st every year in Coldrum Long Barrow. Most of these are ribbons up here. Perhaps uh, some sort of a memento to a cat. Here we have an ornament. Here some object. It looks like it's been here for quite a long time. So once again, this is the rag tree, wish tree, little memorial. This is an amazing place. What do you think? Beautiful. Oh, fantastic. Wow. You have to visit Kent and visit Cold Rum Long Barrow.